whenever we read this term coral reef one thing suddenly hits our mind that is the great barrier reef of australia mm. anything is coming or not but definitely that great barrier reef of australia will come into our mind because this is the most famous barrier reef anywhere on the planet earth so we will try to understand what actually this coral reef is and what is its significance sometimes what happens in order to understand one thing it becomes our compulsion to understand another thing for instance i don't think anybody can understand the color white without understanding the color black by the way <laughs> both the color are present on this one mm. you cannot understand what is sweet without understanding what is sorrowness or the happiness without sorrow so in the same way in order to understand the coral reef we need to understand what is the word polyp means here because polyps are the thing which are responsible behind the creation of these coral reefs mm -hmm. these are the dead but these are the real engineers who make the coral reef as well as provide the raw material you take the example of uh, uh, peda of mathura which is very famous yes world famous peda by the way uh, nobody knows where the which one is that shop from where we can get the actual uh, peda nowadays uh, there is a lots of piracy the same thing is also in case of petha of agra there are more than 50000 shops of panchi petha mm -hmm. one day my friend that uh, told that virendra when you go don't forget to get uh, uh, the petha so i told from this particular shop do i need to take the petha so panchi. he told that uh, the petha of panchi is the most famous one when i reached there to believe me i mean wherever i was seeing everywhere the panchi petha shop was there so the kind of piracy is there you can it is very easy for you to find the missing brother of johnny liver in the movie soldier but it is very difficult to get the actual famous petha of agra anyway so why i give the example of this peda because the one term is peda all right people would be thinking what how is geography is related with the peda but anyway so peda is there and the raw material is the milk without milk i don't think peda can be made so peda is there peda is equivalent to so you can say coral reefs and the milk is like polyp basically what happens the milk gets converted in the form of the peda so the polyps the polyps what happens that they have a character to secrete the calcium carbonate and this why they secrete the calcium carbonate because they use that structure which is being formed after generating this calcium carbonate as a shelter for these polyps and these polyps when they die their skeleton which is again made up of this calcium as small small bones are there so this polyp when dies the skeleton of these polyps get deposited on a particular portion of the ocean body and as these polyp live 
in groups you can find the millions of polyp together the size of one polyp may range anywhere between the size of point of a needle and the size of a soccer ball so these polyps as they live in group when they die what will happen that their skeletons get deposited on the ocean surface and it happens with one generation the another generation what will happen the one generation let's assume it has died okay and the skeleton and uh, the secreted calcium carbonate is getting mixed with this and a layer is being formed another generation will take the birth on it and when they will die then one more layer will get generated the third generation when the third generation will die their skeleton will get deposited and this process keeps on happening and this process does not keep uh, does not uh, happens for one day or two day it keeps on happening this uh, you uh, great barrier reef of australia it is more than 10000 years old million million yes if even more than that and still this process is going on so when such a long process is going on and the layers after layers after layers after layers after layers are getting deposited what will happen that this journey was started somewhere from the ocean surface as the layers are getting deposited and a height is getting created what will happen that a time will come that this structure will come out of the water water and that structure is no one else but the island of lakshadweep andaman not andaman not. andaman the a uh, formation of andaman happens uh, uh, due to the plate tectonic that is a different thing lakshadweep lux lakshadweep that that's why this lakshadweep is also known as the coral island mm. so lakshadweep is nothing but an island which is made up of by through through which animals through Polyp. the polyps the skeleton of polyp is deposited and it came out of the ocean body out of the water and that structure is known as the lakshadweep there was a time when there used to be one lakh islands this is the reason why lakshadweep is called lakshadweep because in sanskrit word in sanskrit language the meaning of lux is equivalent to one lakh but nowadays you cannot find the one lakh highlands in lakshadweep as the climate change and the greenhouse gas emission is happening the ice is melting glaciers are melting and the ocean level is rising so how we will be able to get the same number of islands which used to be once upon a time so so that's how this lakshadweep island also known as coral island comes into existence behind the formation of the coral polyp is the main factor it is an animal it may look like you as a plant but it is an animal and when let's assume the one a coral is being formed what will happen one more coral will be formed and it a series will keep on you know getting formed so so you are starting your journey and you will keep on going as the corals are getting formed and the length of this journey may go sometimes even 1000 kilometers or 2000 kilometers you take again the example of this great barrier reef of australia its length is more than 1800 or close to 2000 km just imagine so when such a long 
chorus are coming together that coming together is known as what the reef reef can never represent to one polar co choral body so when you clubbed many more reef corals together that then you will get the coral reef so, so the word reef is saying that so many corals when they are clubbed together this great barrier it is a reef because there is not only one body of the coral as i have told you it's a very long chain of the coral so that long chain of the corals that is known as the reef there are some specific conditions or situations where the coral can exist it is not like a human being who can survive in each and every type of climate starting from equator till antarctica mm -hmm. we have the existence everywhere these species are not like that they require a very specific geographical location they require very specific temperature and these situations where you are present we will only get the cor coral reefs there so as far as the temperature is concerned so they require 20 to 25 degree celsius temperature of the water and this temperature we experience in the tropic level in the tropic it means between the cancer and the capricorn so because the sunlight is always present here at least in comparison to the temperate zone the 90 degree rays of the sun fall in this region so these regions this region experiences more heat then rest of the regions on the planet earth so since this region is very much favorable for the growth of these corals that's why the maximum corals exist here only you can also again uh, you know the great barrier reef it lies in this particular region when you look at the map of australia so Uh, you know australia is uh, something like this so this portion it crosses uh, the tropic of capricorn the coral reefs are present here you know in this portion you can say uh, this is the north the northeast of australia basically or in the eastern uh, portion which is inclined towards the north all right so this is related to the temperature now let's talk about the depth of the water because you know these corals they require uh, the sunlight as well could you tell me these polyps can they perform photosynthesis or not not why why polyps cannot perform the photosynthesis animal eh? yes Large because they are the animals. animals they are the animals as i have already told they may look like the plants but they are the animals and animal never perform the photosynthesis so from where they are getting the food savans and they get their food there is a symbiotic relationship like in lichen it is visible so these polyps since they 
don't have the capacity to perform photosynthesis what they do that they perform a symbiotic relationship with an alga whose name is Eugenthalia Eugenthalia or Eugenthalia this is an alga and this alga lives in the cell of the polyp alga have the capacity to perform the photosynthesis and why polyps require the help of the Eugenthalia because they don't have the capacity to perform photosynthesis and they cannot get the food and food is essential for their survival 90% food which polyp get they get from the Eugenthalia so since it is an alga it requires the reaction of photosynthesis and why this Eugenthalia lives into the cells of the polyp because it finds a very suitable place very you know safe you can say it's a, a president house for the Eugenthalia the polypes surrounded by the bodyguards very well proof and every facility is there so this one is getting the shelter the space the protection so on and so forth in return the polyp is getting the food as the food is being prepared by Eugenthalia is when the photosynthesis is being performed by him so because the survival of the polyp is dependent depend upon the Eugenthalia and since Eugenthalia is an alga it requires the photosynthesis and if the depth of the water beyond an extent how the sun rays will reach there and how the photosynthesis will take place so the important thing is this that the availability of the sunlight that's why what happens that the depth of these polyps or these coral corals is not more than 50 or 60 meters beyond that it is very difficult for the sunlight to penetrate the water and these Eugenthalia they have different different colors they are very colorful that much colors are not even seen during the holy festival in India that much color the Eugenthalia have and this is the reason why the corals are so colorful and so beautiful because this Eugenthalia when it goes inside the polyp as it is colorful because of the color of this Eugenthalia this polyp look very colorful and the whole coral look very beautiful it can you know make anyone fall in love they are so beautiful and so rich in their variety and species so this is a strong relationship which we experience between the polyp and Eugenthalia there is one more term that is called uh, coral bleaching coral bleaching what happens in coral bleaching the temperature of the water sometimes increases beyond the level of their acceptance and when the temperature rises and you can very easily assume uh, due to this climate change greenhouse gas emissions the temperature is rising day by day that's why the whole uh, this COP21 and recently which happened uh, I think last year it was arranged somewhere in Glasgow and after that I think uh, uh, we're in UAE mm -hmm. anyway 
so it is based on what to control the rising temperature otherwise so many species will die and the human being will face a lot of trouble people will start killing each other if this situation will keep on happening the rule of darwin which was meant for the animals darwin said a struggle is the existence of the life it was told in relation to the animals but it will get applied in the human being if this kind of limitless use of resources and uncontrollable use of resources is being done so when the temperature rises what happens that these juice then genthelii since they cannot bear a temperature more than their survival what happens that they leave the polyps and when they leave the polyps polyps were getting the color because of whom because of the presence of the eugenthelii and when the temperature increases the eugenthelii they will leave the polyps and at that time the polyp will come in their original color that is white and that white color is nothing but the coral bleaching mm -hmm. so when the coral comes in its uh, actual color that time you can say it is uh, the death time of the corals because eugenthelia uh, is coming out of the polyp how they will get the food as i have already told you more than 90% requirement of the food of the polyp is being fulfilled by the eugenthelia so this was as far as uh, the polyp and this huge and delayed relationship was concerned and what actually the coral bleaching is the main reason is the climate change and this rising temperature which we need to control anyhow otherwise it will be very difficult not for the survival of the only corals and polyp but for the human being because ultimately everybody is affected with everything so the cascading effect of this thing is very costly now let me discuss the types of the corals there are three types of the corals basically uh, coral reefs the one is the fringing fringing reef it is very famous uh, in zanzibar zanzibar is an island which is very famous for what it is very famous for its cloves Clo, in Hindi we call it long. Long. Yes. Clo. It is also called Spice Island. Mm -hmm. So in this Zanzibar, if you want to see the best form of the fringing reef, you must go Zanzibar. However, this place is not very safe. <laughs> But. Uh, Uh, the kind of beauty it has you can say it is the second heaven on the earth so fringing reef basically what happens that uh, uh, they are very much connected to the coastal region let's assume this is the land okay and uh, this is the sea. water body this is the water here and this is the land the fringing reefs they are located here only as you start entering into the water you will come in the contact of the fringing reef or whichever reef is coming 
as you are entering into the water that reef will be known as the fringing reef but what happens when you don't get the reef in the coast this uh, in oceanography this uh, uh, portion is known as the continental shelf after that continental slope so the existence of uh, this is based upon this continental as you start your journey in the continental self you experience this one so it is very much connected to the coast as your foot will touch the water body you can experience the fringing reef but sometimes you need to cover a huge distance sometimes the things are not easy enough you need to do little more hard work so what happens the same land okay and thus this is the water body but this time you will not get the reef here you will get you know somewhere here this is not connected just to, because this is the coast so you have to cover a distance you take the example of uh, again great barrier reef of australia mm -hmm. this great barrier reef uh, is almost uh, uh, more than somewhere it is 30 kilometers away from the coast of the australia and this distance somewhere it goes uh, more than 200 so what i want to tell you that it is not very much connected to the coast as it is connected in context to the fringing uh, one you can also see the map of australia and you will see the coral reef is mentioned which has a distance the water body is between so uh, this is in uh, between okay it is not connected to the coast and this kind of coral reef is known as what the barrier the great barrier reef of australia so this uh, yes it is a barrier it works as a barrier because the people who are living let's assume it is australia okay people are living they are very much protected when the cyclone takes place because these places or these uh, coral reefs they work as a barrier and they diminish the intensity of the cyclone which was coming to hit and affect adversely the coastal region of australia so this is also the reason why do we call barrier. it as a barrier apart from this this is the barrier reef and this is the coast and this is the water in between this water is very uh, favorable for the fishing so the fishing activities also takes place here because of this structure little bit the chemical Depends. composition of the water little bit get changes as it is working as a barrier so you know the, so certain amount of salt and all those things if it were not there so certainly at least some sort of difference we would experience so this was the second variety of the reef the first was the uh, fringing reef the second is the barrier mm -hmm. reef and the third one third one is known as what atoll mm -hmm. atoll atoll and in order to visualize what actually atoll is actually look when you are in the coast that time you experienced a fringing when you went little ahead you experience the barrier what will happen when you go little more ahead because uh, there is a theory given by uh, darwin in the year 1840 that theory is called sub subsidence theory mm -hmm. darwin basically explained how these coral reefs came into existence what was their pattern and darwin told that 
every coral reef is started their journey from the fringing one the fringing one became the barrier and ultimately barrier reef became the atoll so whichever bar uh, this coral reef is in the form of atoll according to the darwin there was a time when it used to be in the form of the barrier there was a time when it used to be in the form of the fringing so this has been told by charles darwin a very famous scientist uh, uh, sorry not scientist uh, yes geovigiani yes so fringing barrier and atoll in 1840 he gave the theory of subsidence It, this theory is also called subsidence by the way there was uh, one more uh, a geographer or you can say scientist from america whose name was uh, uh, i think uh, uh, daily something daily daily he related the journey or you can say the existence of the corals uh, with the theory related to ice age he told that there was a time when ice used to be there and temperature increases i don't want to discuss that as it is little complicated okay i will discuss in a different lecture i am just telling that the theory these two people they gave the theory to justify the presence of the coral reefs how they came in existence the theory of charles darwin is much more acceptable than the theory of this american scientist called daily he gave the theory in the late uh, 19th uh, century somewhere around i think uh, 1980 or something like this okay by the way year is not as important the uh, in the late 19th century and darwin's theory was given much more earlier than this one so as of now or in present the theory of darwin subsidence theory is more accepted version and some modern experiments have have proved that this theory is much more close to the reality however 100% surety we still don't have as they are the theory only okay and there is a difference between the word called uh, theory and there is one more word uh, called uh, uh, hypothesis you know these things are there so uh, in order to imagine at all you do one thing that you imagine this is a this is an ocean within an ocean you experience a bowl bowl within an ocean or you can if you are facing little difficulty to uh, draw the figure of an ocean you can draw the figure of a pond and within inside that pond you place a bowl so what this this is the side of the bowl is this the side of the bowl or not okay and this where the water will be there okay when you place the bowl on uh, on the level of the water then what will happen the bowl since it has some space the water will go into the bowl and this is the border this is the border so this atoll basically the in atoll the structure of the reef becomes circular circular and this the side is known as what at all and the water which is into the bowl the water which is into the bowl this water is known as lagoon lagoon so this the when you are focusing on the water then you have to use the term called lagoon and when you are focusing on this border you know the side then you have to use the word atoll sometimes we get confused 
with the atoll and the lagoon. Lagoon is the water body which is surrounded by the atoll. So uh, this was the third variety of the reef, the fringing the barrier and the atoll one. By the way, this is not completely closed. There are you know some spaces, something like this, and uh, uh, because of these spaces, what happens that this water keeps on mixing with the water which is present here and if anybody wants to go let's assume you want to go with your titanic you can very easily reach in the middle of the lagoon because if it were completely closed then you have to lift off your titanic on your back which is almost impossible to do as long as you are not the hulk or something like this so I hope it is uh, clear what actually the atoll and lagoon is and these spaces how they are enabling the water to get mixed with the water which is present here. Okay, Geography is all about imagination. We cannot draw anything and everything but certainly your brain can visualize and draw no matter if you have understood anything or if you are trying to understand certainly your brain can draw that figure so this was as far as uh, the coral reef was concerned we will discuss uh, something different in our next lecture namaskar